Okay, let's get this started. Um, thanks everyone for joining second public 4844 implementers call. Um, bunch of small spec updates uh, uh, today, and then uh, hopefully we can spend a lot of time talking about uh, DevNet 3. Um, high level, like last week, uh, there were a couple, um, a couple of different uh, spec issues we had to go through. Uh, I think we resolved all of them, so we'll, we'll go into those as we as we cover the the spec. And um, yeah, I, and then yeah, we definitely want to chat about uh, CKZG. Uh, there was some changes done to the interface, um, and also uh, support for uh, Rust and NIM uh, that we want to discuss, and then. Yeah, trying to put together a spec for the DevNet, what that looks like, uh, talking about this blob testing a bit more. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and Jesse just added something about uh, the Capella spec changes. So maybe to start, uh, we, Ansgar, you closed the fee market issue and you opened up a bunch of new uh, spec issues. Do you want to just give us a quick update there? Um, where are we at on the fee market? Uh, yeah. Sure. So um, the fee market PIs finally merged. Um, there wasn't really uh, any changes since last week's call. The only one uh, kind of substantive uh, spec change that did happen was the one we agreed upon. That is to re reduce the um, the min minimum uh, price per, per data gas uh, down to one for the PR itself. So, so that has happened. And uh, I think my understanding is that the current test net uses kind of the, the original value that, that, that was there. So basically that is the one place in which the P market right now, I think the spec and the, the test net then uh, do diverge. But other than that, um, not, nothing changed. So that's much now. Um, and then uh, basically I, I opened PRs for all the remaining places where, at least from from the, what I can see about the the EIP, basically there's still things, actual specs things that will change between now and um, bringing this to mainnet. Uh, just basically, so we have all of them open because people uh, on all codes did express a desire to basically get to something at least close to a spec freeze as soon as possible. Um, and so these three places are one is just a PI again to change this minimum data gas price back to something other than one. Um, yeah, it's more, more, more meant as a place of discussion. So we could do that, we could not do that. We could change it, pick a different value, whatever, but like at least, you know, now there's a place where we can make the decision. Um, the second one would, was the one that we also talked about last week, which is the um, uh, returning the modules from the pre-compile. Actually, the pre-compile does not currently return any value, so it would now just return the modules, although uh, Dunkrad, um, I, I didn't really give Dunkrad any time to, to add the, the rationale section. I only did that yesterday evening, but he already um, still already delivered and, 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 and um, wrote something about the rationale. Um, and there might be, we, we might have to add um, and, uh, something, not only return the modules, but also return the um, uh, the, the some some second value. I, I forget exactly what that was. Uh, maybe Dan can talk about it um, in a second. And then the the third one, just for completeness, um, I think we all kind of agreed um, in, in in Bogota and everywhere that we should initially kind of reduce the throughput of the EIP, start with the smaller one, and um, and then ramp back up in in later hard forks. So just to actually get that into the spec, I also created a, a third PR. That's maybe the one that the most people would have opinions on. I just picked um, two blobs target, four blobs max. So 0.25 megabytes target, 0.5 megabytes max as something that seems like a sane uh, starting value. But if people are opinionated, it should be higher, lower. Um, yeah, that, that would be a good place to, to also come there. And um, I think that's all for my, uh, there's one more small thing that came up during kind of uh, getting all these PS merged. Uh, right now, uh, we, we do have external links in the EIP, which is a little bit annoying because um, that's against the EIP editing rules. So the bot is always unhappy. So right now, uh, basically, author-approved PRs do not get auto-merged. 
um, we should fix it in some way. We should either get the EAP, uh, some EAP editors to, to modify the bots and allow this, or we should re remove the external links, but this is not a great place to be. Yeah, I think, so, and I think, yeah, I think on that note, the EIP editors are literally discussing adding external links um, ASAP and especially like having a sort of allow list for external links and uh, the CL specs would definitely be part of that. Um, I can follow up on that to see if, if there's a way to just like make that single change quicker. Um, yeah, so we're not always blocked on that. Um, sweet, any comments, thoughts on uh, the various spec changes that Ansgar just discussed? The modulus one, do we think that that, it seems like the minimum data gas price and the reducing of throughput, those are constant changes. And so it seems like we probably are comfortable with leaving those open for a little bit longer and having discussion, but the modulus one is an interface change. Do we think we can get that merged in the next week ahead of the, the next all core dev? So we can say like at least all the interfaces or yeah, I think we can hopefully get to all the interfaces being, being merged. I, I think I, I would say yes. Um, just one trivial modification that Sony needs to make. We need to, you know, just the modulus. We also um, need the block uh, size. So 496 as a value should also be returned. But yeah, that's all. I don't see why it can't be first uh, tomorrow. Awesome. So there's no, there's no like contention around the approach it's just a question of like actually merging it because i know on the last call we had like four different options but um yeah i we don't, don't know about that what were the what were the other options i haven't heard about that. uh what was vitalik had like these four options um so two of them were like a modulus opcode and then and then yeah there was the question of taking the modulus as an input versus returning it as an output. I think we all agreed that we preferred it as an output on last call. Um, but then the, yeah, the only other uh, design choice was, would we want this as an opcode instead? My personal opinion is no, but I don't know if there's someone who like strongly feels we, we should have it as an opcode instead. I think we had the whole debate about this last time and we landed on this. Yeah. So unless anyone has okay. a final question, then should we move with it? Okay, great. Then yeah, let's try and get this merch in the next week or so. Um, and yeah, that would be nice to come on awkward devs and have only basically the two constants left to, to tweak um, in the EIP. Yeah. Um, Marius, what do you mean in the chat? So we need a spec at some point that blob transactions are not sent via broadcast anymore. So if we allow blob transactions to be sent via broadcast, that opens up a DOS vector uh, on the transaction pool. And uh, the thing we came up with on uh, in, in Bogota was to disallow transactions to be sent we are broadcast, and uh, so we have two, two, two types of like sending transactions, basically. One is just uh, broadcasting them. We usually broadcast to the square root of the number of peers. And the other way we do it is we announce the transactions, uh, the transactions that we have, and peers can ask for the transactions by, by, uh, by hash. And uh, we spec E68, which bas basically enhances this announcement message. So we do not only announce the transaction hashes, but we also announce uh, the transaction type and the transaction size. And uh, doing so uh, makes it really easy for clients to only pick blob transactions or only pick non-blob transactions, depending on, on their state, if they have enough blob transactions in, in, 
in the transaction pool, then they will not uh, fetch further blob transactions. And uh, or, or if they like if they are currently being dosed or don't have the the uh, the the very like the the compute bandwidth, then they're not uh, going to uh, fetch blob transactions. And um, we have the spec for 68. We and also we uh, rolled out uh, the implementation in Geth, um, but we don't have the spec that blob, tra blob transactions are not allowed to be broadcasted, and broadcasting blob transactions is a protocol violation, and um, we kind of need this for security at some point. So we need to create a new spec for that. And so this means, just so I understand correctly, it's like you can still send a blob transaction in the public mempool, but your peers will have to specifically request it from you. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. It, 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 it's yeah. just like you're not broadcasting the transaction, uh, but you're announcing the transactions to your peers yeah. and they will fetch it from you. It's, yeah. it's just like turns around the, like, yeah. the announcement mechanism, basically. Uh, Ansgar? Right. Uh, I was just wondering, um, uh, Maris, uh, am I correct in my understanding that right now the kind of the broadcast would not include uh, the 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 gas price or the or the, the, the data gas price? Uh, yes, the broadcast only includes the size of the transaction and the type of the transaction. Okay, and that's it's 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 good enough. Um, I think uh, it will allow you to create a transaction pool that uh, if you don't have any valid trans any valid prop, prop transactions and you have enough time to verify them, you will fetch them and um, uh, you, you can hold like maybe 100 blob transactions in memory or something and um, make sure that you have uh, enough blob transactions to fill the next couple of blocks. Should you add the max fee to that so that when you broadcast a transaction, you're saying it has this max fee. And so this way mm, I can no. know. Like if we, if we start adding more fields, then it becomes very, very brittle uh, because people can always lie uh, oh, about they these prove. fields. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, you need to know the, okay, I see. You need to verify uh, the balance. How easy would that be to, to later modify? Because the nice thing, of course, is that this is not like a consensus change. So like, it sounds like this should definitely be good enough to kind of it's, it's roll very, the ELP very, out and everything. It's very easy to to just create a new ETH protocol version and add fields to this announcement message. Okay, because it feels like there's something where like six months into having the EIP live and just seeing behavior, we can always just revisit and see if maybe some, I don't know, yes, propagation yes. of blob transactions is not ideal and we can improve it or something. But this should definitely be, sounds okay. like this should be good enough for the, for the long. And so for the, for the disabling of the gossip, is that an extension to 868 or do we need like 870 for that? Um... ETH69, um, no. Oh, we had ETH69 already. No, ETH, uh, we, we <laughs> kind of made the choice not to go ahead with ETH69 because ETH69 okay. ETH just adds the uh, withdrawals to the block body, um, but we changed the structure of the messages before, um, for example, when we added uh, 1559 without a new ETH protocol version. And since it's only optional fields, it's kind of fine not, not to create a new ETH protocol version. Um, the kind of similar thing with this, um, we can create a new proto uh, ETH protocol version, but it's not really needed. Yeah, It feels like conceptually having it all in ETH68 would be nice because you can say this is the ETH protocol version change for 4844. So um, uh, 
the, why we didn't do it in if 68 uh, <clears throat> now is because we don't, we want to roll out if 68 now oh um, and it's not a change that needs to know right. about withdrawals it doesn't need to know about blood transactions it it just does uh, it modifies this announcement message and so we can we can roll it out now we can have clients update and um, in six months, we can we can actually use it. Okay, that that that's the idea. Okay, so then let's split it. <clears throat> let's split it to eat sixty nine. Does that make sense? And there, can you? I, and this may be a dumb question, but I'm trying to learn. Uh, what what what's preventing us from just putting this in four eight four four as like a component of the specification? Networking Nothing. just has this. So. Uh, Having having this this rule about the blob transaction actually kind of fits in into four eight four four. Um, so I, I, I that would be my proposal to add it to four eight four four. Yeah, I don't know. And is it is it basically just saying these transactions cannot be gossiped in the mempool? They need to be announced using e68 and then sent the peers yes exactly okay do you want to make that change or is it helpful if somebody else makes the change to the spec i i i'm not an author of 4844 i have no idea about the spec of 4844 um so i don't like i don't want to improve there um if 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 someone wants to take over that would be really nice and I can I can help them uh, with it. Yeah, I, I I can do it, and also just um, to mention because that was one of the last small changes with the free market PR. And um, someone pointed out that the um, mempool issues uh, section was no longer kind of um, relevant because that was written for with like a dynamic block pricing in mind, like when it was still kind of charged dynamically in gas. So that was mostly deleted and, and replaced with like a small section. The small section does already say that basically recommended changes uh, would be to no longer propagate um, large transactions. Uh, I kind of wanted to to link to to Marius's um, EIP, but uh, again, one of these external like like it's not an external link, but it's a link to an EIP that was not yet merged, and that's not allowed either. So I couldn't get linked to it. But once that is in a state where we allow to link to it, um, it would be a small change to actually um, basically explicitly mention it and link to it. Yeah, I guess, is it possible? Can we do the change now without the links? We can just mention E68 is in text, right? Um, and we did this for the merge EIP to get around this. Um, like, and then once it's merged, we can just add a link, but I think it would be good to have a PR for that sooner rather than later even if we don't have a merged link to the actual E68 EIP. Sounds good. And I can um, double check with Marius that um, the, the, the way we, we mentioned in the EIP makes sense. Awesome. Thanks, Ansgar. Um, OK. There was another PR. Uh, is Terrence here, actually? Uh, I don't see him, but Terrence added. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hey. Oh, OK, sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, lots of people on the screen. Um, yeah, you had your PR for the uh, Engine API that you wanted to discuss. Um, yeah, yeah, I just posted um, it in the chat. Was, so yeah, don't want to take credit away. Uh, that, was, that, that was Proto's PR, but I do think like we need to do something with it other than just having like, like the pull request out there. It's been there for a few months. I think there's two ways to go about it. The first way, it, it just merge it to the master. And then because we're going to have a V2 at some point anyway. So therefore, when we have a V2 for the long term, we can just deprecate this one. And then the second option is just have like a 4844 folder and just put that in the 4844 folder, similar to what we did with, with the consensus spec. I, yeah, I just don't think like, I, I just don't think for the short term in a PR is a good idea because yeah. first of all, it is very hard to find for like, like to me and my teammates a few minutes to find it. So yeah, I'm, I'm open to both options and uh, I'm curious to hear what people think.
And uh, I don't think there's any engine API authors here, unfortunately, but yeah, whoever is working or whoever has the right to merge engine API PR, feel free, yeah, to speak out. So uh, is this about whether to like make the get payload versions and the new payload versions like different from prior versions? So like having the version increment as the payload changes? Right, so I think in this definition, which is V1, um, get blob is a separate engine API call. So, okay. but then for V2, I think it's meant to be coupled. So when you say get payload, okay. it also returns the blob bundle as well. I think for now, we just have to worry about V1 because that's what Gap has implemented and it's quite nice. It is, I mean, it, I don't think there's that much implementation complexity. It, it just two calls versus one call. But yeah, so my point is just like, if we have this definition, um, I think we should put it somewhere else that's more official. So therefore other client can begin experimenting it such as like Nevermind like, and, and, and like, uh, and, and like, yeah, basically. Yeah, I guess I would rather not set up a whole 4844 folder because we don't really have that in the execution APIs. Like there's just one spec. Um, I would lean towards just merging this and then maybe the two people I'd want to get like a sanity check thumbs up on are Mikael and, and Matt who both let comments on the PR, but um, I, can, I can send it to the two of them, see if they have any objections to merging it, merging it, merging it as is. Um, and then, yeah, we can, we can discuss, uh, the V2, uh, yeah, the V2 method separately, but I agree having this actually merge would be, would be good. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so, and assuming uh, that like, yeah, either Mikhail or Matt doesn't have an objection, I think we can just merge this. Um, yeah. So one thing I would say though, is, um, if we keep get payload separate, like, we need get payload to have the pre and post fork versions of the payload. So like, I would imagine this would look like having a get payload B1. That's like the merge fork, get payload B2 that's Capella fork. And then either include the execution payload fields in that one, or we would need a V3 in order to separate the withdrawals version from the um, Capella version. So like, I, if you have to implement three versions of that, like, uh, hmm. I guess mm. that's can we can we can we not have them as optional fields in V two? So we already have V two for withdrawals, okay. and um, I I don't believe we actually need V V two for withdrawals. We could just have optional fields, um, but the way we it's implemented right now, we have V two. And um, I think it should be possible to add the, the um, blob stuff as optional to, yeah, Mario, to V2. That's in fact the way I'm, I'm adding it in right now. Just adding another uh, optional field seems to be fine. Okay, sure. I mean, that's fine with me. Okay, so we merged this one as is, as a separate call, which we've, is there still, yeah, I guess, is there still value in this separate call if we're adding the optional fields to get payload V2? Yeah, I mean, in the separate call as is, probably uh, not. It, it, okay, so. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, does it unblock people working on prototypes now to have this get blobs bundle v1 call merged? Or should we close this PR and instead open one with get payload v2 with optional types for the blobs? I think either is fine, but we just have to make a decision because like from the execution of their client point of view, they need to know what to implement. We don't want them to spend time working on the separate code, but at the same time, no one will use it, right? So I think it's important to come to consensus soon. And I do think like uh, maybe 
on Thursday, we can bring this up again to see what people prefer. And yeah. Oh, Proto, do you want to give your, why do you like the blobs bundle? So we split it out to enable people to work on this without having merge conflicts or consistency issues if the ongoing uh, withdrawals uh, work and the changes to the engine API. But just isolating it to a single method, it's really easy to work with. And since we only call this API against one single node, we know the content is consistent. We can expect the blobs to be there after we see the blobs in the block or the payload that we just retrieve with the regular method. So I don't think there are many consistency issues to worry about, and we can just use this method. Long term, a combined method might make sense, but I think it's very like premature optimization. Uh, so okay. just, just one one small thing. It would be, it's very important for uh, execution layer clients to once you once you call uh, get payload to stop building new payloads and just uh, cache the one that that they have uh, at this specific point. Uh, I think it's something that most execution layer clients already do, but it's just something to keep in mind for, for execution layer devs. I guess, yeah, given all the prototypes use this now and it's easier to work on it separately, I would also lean towards just merging it if my client and, and Mikael don't see a strong objection and then we can, yeah, worst case, we can just deprecate it in favor of get payload v2 with optional fields once uh, yeah, once we're ready to integrate stuff together a bit more. Um, anything else on this? Um, okay, um, next big spec thing is the rebase on the consensus layer side uh, of, of Ford 44 on top of Capella. Um, I have this on the agenda for the CL call uh, later this week, but curious if anyone had uh, thoughts about this. Um, yeah. I'm in the, I'm in the process on the execution layer side within Geth of um, pulling in the um, withdrawals PR into our EIP 4844 devnet. Um, I think um, Jesse is working on the Lodestar version of that for the CL and um, Mofi on Prism. Um, I, I think from our end, sorry, so, yeah, so, sorry for interrupting you. I think um, from our end, so there's two withdraw PR out there today. I think one from Danny, one from Polters. There are essentially changing how the withdrawal works by basically uh, by, by basically removing the withdrawal queue. And it's not clear to us like whether those will be merged or whether we'll stick with the old way, but that actually does like dramatically like uh, basically different with the current Capella spec today. So for us, we're waiting until Thursday's consensus layer call to basically to 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 basically see if we can come to consensus on like on on like what the withdrawal mechanism will be before we start putting four 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 on top of Capella. Okay, what does it look like in the code right now for you? Is it on we top of the matrix? Yeah, right now it's on top of Bellatrix, but since like, yeah, but since like Capella, we're not sure what the final state of withdrawal will look like. We're just waiting until Thursday. But yeah, it kind of sucks because like, ideally we can rebase like today pretty easily, but given that withdrawal is still kind of in the flux, yeah, we're just waiting on that. Okay, got it. Um, so I guess, I'm not sure we'll be able to close out the withdrawal issue on Thursday, um, hopefully, but I, 
uh, yeah, I think there's a chance we still discuss it for another, another few weeks. Um, what's the best? What's the most useful thing for like people working on prototypes now if um, if we don't have a clear withdrawal spec on the CL side? Well, I think we need to know what is the scope for DevNet 3, whether withdrawal should be there. And if withdrawal should be there, is withdrawal just part of like the beacon block and beacon state object or, or is withdrawal part of the state transition? I think those needs more clarification, yeah. Right. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I thought we decided last week we do want to include at least the, um, you know, the, the block changes for Capella withdrawals, I mean. Right. And do, the, do those change based on POTUS's PR, Terrence? Um, so those change would matter because in POTUS PR, the beacon state does not have the withdrawal queue anymore versus currently the beacon state has the withdrawal queue. So, but if it just beacon block itself, then it's probably fine, which, but if the beacon state, it doesn't matter. And yeah, and then I also assume that you just have a flag that says, hey, we, we're gonna skip withdraw or something. So therefore like basically the withdraw objects are basically stuck with zeros or something here. Yeah, yeah my, my preference would be that like, we don't want the dev nets to be blocked on withdrawals work. That said, if there's a way to make it somewhat like, you know, future proof that like, ideally, you know, we sort of stub withdrawals or something. So that like, it just doesn't require a ton of, of work once we have a withdrawal spec um, to, to merge everything over. I don't know what's the simplest way to accomplish that, but I don't think we should try to test given how like, uh, yeah, unstable the withdrawal spec is right now. I think if we have a clear target for 4844 that's somewhat independent, um, that would be best. Um, but I don't know if there's a way to do that in, in, in client teams. Is that just including the fields, but having zeros stubbed? Yeah, I think for beacon block is fine. We can include beacon. We can include withdraw those in the beacon block. I don't think those are. Uh, yeah, I think those are fairly stable. It's the beacon state I'm worried about. If, but then it's just also kind of weird that you have withdraw in the beacon block but not in the beacon state. And uh, yeah, so I think my preference is for DevNet three to unblock this. Just go ahead without withdraw. That's my personal preference. But yeah, I'm also happy to like hear you know, others' feedback as well. Um, yeah, I think for us, it'd be generally better to include the withdrawals consensus types um, and then stub out the consensus logic. So that would mean like stub out the block processing and the state processing, um, but then just keep the, the fields in the block in the state. So they would just like remain empty because we'd never apply anything to them. Um, yeah, so that, that'd be preferable for us. Um, but it does kind of stink that the withdrawal types might change. But if there's no corresponding like state transition, block transition logic, then it's relatively easy for us at least to change the, to update the types to reflect the type changes. But um, I don't want to make this too lighthouse centric. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can do that as well. I mean, I think we're, I think you're assuming the latest consensus spec, which the withdrawal has a queue, right? Because we, we actually have that implemented. We're just thinking whether we should remove it or not. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my, our preference would be to keep the Capella types, even though they are a little less stable. Um, and then just once we have a DevNet target, just like, We'll freeze that and maybe we'll have to uh, diverge from the withdrawal specs to some extent on the dev nets, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll have more clarity Thursday. Yeah, I was going to add, I mean, we have at least a couple more weeks of work with dev net. Do you, is there a chance stuff will become more clear or what, what's the contentious issue here, Tim? Um, Terrence, I think you could explain it better than me because POTUS wrote it, but just how the withdrawal queue is designed um, to accommodate partial versus full withdrawals beyond that 
I'm not sure. Right. So there's basically a trade-off right now between in terms of like specs of simplicity versus UX. So there's the, so there's two ways to go about it. The first way is just like include the withdraw queue in the state. But with that, it's slightly more complicated for the beacon stage is now you have to implement the queue. And then this is also client implementation. Every client implements this differently. So the people will have different preferences. And the other preferred method is just to remove the queue from the beacon state. But that kind of have a shape your UX for like people that want to do full withdrawal, they have to wait a few more days. And that's the trade off. But yeah, I don't want to like go on rent here. But yeah, I, I think that Thursday, meeting we can follow up more on this okay. yeah i mean i don't have a perspective on it. i'm just curious whether um why it would take more than a couple of weeks to figure figure out this issue um but it sounds like <laughs> so i think different... yeah i think a couple of weeks is, is is what i would expect as well it's just the pr i believe came up like late last week so like on thursday's call we might have a resolution i think if we don't it would be the call after that right like i don't think it would go beyond or even between the two calls like it doesn't need to be gated on the call but i it's possible that in two days we don't have a resolution but in two weeks i'm i would be surprised why we wouldn't That's, okay because i would highly prefer waiting on some stability in the withdrawal spec because we know a ip 44 won't go out without it right so i i'm okay. on this you know strongly preferring we get as much in there for our devnet 3 as possible um that'll put us in my opinion the best shape Okay, so we can definitely we can definitely uh, wait until at least Thursday's call. Um, um, yeah, does that make sense, to everyone? And I had okay, I had a, a very rough hack in the um, with what i think we should aim for in the devnet uh, let me share the link here and i'll share my screen as well um yeah and i'm curious yeah what people think about this um so high level obviously uh 4844 uh in and then if this pr has been merged this would uh yeah so this is merged so the 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 dev the fee market pr would be part of the EL spec. Um, I don't think we have any other pending PRs on the EL that we'd want to include in the DevNet. Um, what about the modulus change? Yeah, I guess, is that something that we want to try and have in, in DevNet 3? I, I think that was minor enough to where we can do it either way. I don't feel strongly. It'd be pre preferable if we could get it in, but you know, okay. It's not so I think yeah, let's try to get it in. Then especially if we're waiting. So if we think we can resolve the modulus in the next week or so, and we're waiting on withdrawals on this CL side as well, um, I would rather we 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 get it in. Um, so okay, and I think the 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 gas price and the the number of blobs we can just leave as is. I don't think we need to change the constants there. Is that reasonable for everyone? Uh, yeah, okay. And then at each 68, do we want to have this as part of the DevNet? I guess, do we need, uh, like, yeah, I, I'm curious, Maris, is this something you think we need as part of the DevNet or if client teams are gonna start working on it anyways, should we just like leave this out of scope and if a certain client has it, then great, but yeah. Uh, sorry, what? Um, so for the next 4844 DevNet, should we push for an E68 implementation across all clients? No, um, no, no. No. Okay. No. And so this means then what I would also exclude is this um, upcoming PR by Ansgar about uh, not broadcasting the blob transactions. Um, because if we don't have E68, we need to broadcast the blob transactions. Um, and just for the record, though, by, by the way, I would prefer if this, if basically we only include that into the four specs anyway as a recommendation 
for client developers. I don't think it should be part of what we technically spec out. Like it should be part of the issues rationale section, not of the spec section, because it's not a consensus change. Um, but I could be overruled if people feel strongly yeah. that we that it should be part so of the spec. It, it, it kind of will be a consensus change for us, or like a bigger change than just a spec change, um, because we will drop nodes that don't adhere to to this right right but it's still ah okay because yeah. it's like it's a protocol violation yeah right but it's still more like we don't have a erp for you're not allowed to endorse your peer but you'd still also be dropped um well, we well, well, if you if you trust us right now, we're not going to drop you. Right, or like send now. What whatever whatever I can. I'm, I'm sure there's something peer to peer that I can do to, to make you drop me. Um, and uh, there's no yes. yes. Like, S send an invalid packet. Right. And like yeah, and so. Yeah, we, we can see about it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah, feel yeah. terrible yeah. about having yeah. part of this. Okay, but side. yeah, let's. Let's leave all of that out of DevNet 3, though. Um, both, what's, your, what's your thinking for leaving that out of DevNet 3? I guess 868 being like having to add all this peer-to-peer -peer code beyond the core consensus logic. That would be my. And also, also we that don't, yeah. we don't have we don't have it implemented yet. Not even yeah. in guess. Uh, we yeah. only have the e68 change but not the like the different transaction pool the only like dropping people on if they send if they send stuff on broadcast and yeah i would also leave it up yeah because we can because without it we can figure out if all the consensus changes work across all of the clients right and and then this is this extra step of just the networking across all of them but if the core consensus logic does not work um yeah that's that's a, a deeper problem though um okay on the el side anything else that's missing or that we should specifically exclude i think this generally looks good okay cl spec a bit more tricky um so uh, these recent changes probably aren't that recent anymore. I did this last week, but um, just as a heads up, like we couple the the blobs, uh, the block uh, for for recent history, but I believe we decoupled them for historical sync. Um, we lowered the blob retention period to about two weeks. Uh, so this is already merged in the spec, but just wanted to highlight them. Um, oh, let's see, there's a chat. Uh, I'm not sure what your question is, Alexei. Uh, no, it's um, not all creepy. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, in terms of just pending PRs, um, so rebasing on Capella, um, so we said we're gonna wait until the withdrawal conversation is, is resolved. It might not be this PR. Um, but yeah, we'll have to do something um, along those lines, um, but not for now. Uh, we had this other PR to the uh, update, uh, the interface for KZG. Um, I know we had this on the agenda as well. Uh, uh, George or Dankrad, do either of you wanna give a quick update on where this is at? and? and if you think we should include this in the next iteration of the DevNet? Uh-huh. So um, the idea is that uh, in August, we made the proposed API for the KZG library that like clients would interface with. Uh, that API was pretty low level. So us to make the C library, the CKZG library pretty minimal. Uh, but in Bogota, uh, we discussed this. Um, with Dunkred and Ramana, who know more about how the KZG library looks like. And they are okay with making the crypto API 
a bit more high level. So, you know, like instead of exposing like 11 functions, now we expose three high level functions. Uh, the nice thing about this is that this is less burden to the client devs so that they only interface with the high level functions and they don't need to care at all about how the cryptography works. They don't need to do all this hashing uh, Fiat Shamir stuff. All of this is handled basically by the KGG library. So um, I was away, but uh, today I came back and I've been uh, kind of reviewing the PR, the changes since then. Um, and I think um, I can get it ready uh, today for merging. Um, and Ramana told me that he has made most of the changes on the library side. Um, so we are pretty much kind of ready on this, but depending on when the next definite is, it might be a better idea to keep the old thing going. In, I don't know, like if it's in two, three weeks, I guess it's a good time to use a new API. But if it's like this or next week, potentially it's better to use the old API for more stability. I think it would be two, more like two weeks because we already discussed we're going to like wait for withdrawals on the CL side, which will probably take, you know, up to a week and or something like that. So I think if this is on the order of two weeks, it probably makes sense to try and go for it and um, yeah, have it as part of the spec. Yeah, I was going to add, there's still a good deal of crypto code in the clients that would be nice to move out. Um, maybe maybe that you know, fits nicely with this work. And there's crypto code that won't be implemented in the clients if this change lands. The right. Code star starting now, I, I won't implement all of the crypto code that will, will be in these libraries. I would much prefer for it to be in CKG, KCG. Okay, that makes me lean toward let's let's include this spec. Uh, let's include this PR as part of our testnet spec if it means that, uh, yeah, we can simplify a bunch of the next prototypes. And um, and then if, if next week, I guess next week, let's make sure to like, come back to this on, on the call. And, and if for whatever reason, um, you know, this is being delayed or whatever, and like, we're like, I wouldn't want this to hold up the test net, but I think if, if we can have it, then we, we very much should push for it. Yeah. Agreed. Um, I will um, talk to Ramana who is not on this call and uh, ask his opinion about uh, how it's going to be next week. But from what he said, I think it should be okay. Of course, As new bindings will need to be written uh, because the, maybe, I don't know, I need to see the interfaces. I think some of the bindings are already done, basically. I think like he's been following uh, very closely the PR already. Yes, so I think the bindings are already um, up to the new I format. mean, there might be minor adjustments to the bindings, but generally we've already adjusted them to the new format. It's all bytes and everything. Is there an open branch or something for CKCG that implements the new spec? Just because, like, yeah, but yeah, there is. Yeah. Are doing it. It so it's, yep. Yeah. It's 4844 underscore 30, 38. Yeah. That's the one. Okay. Nice. Um, Okay, and then on the CL side, we had another open PR that was blocked on this fee market changes. Um, should we, can we go ahead and merge this, Prolo? Once the PR from Ansgar with the yeah. fee market is merged, then yes. Yeah. This is merged, yeah. It was like this morning, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's probably worth just sanity checking that there was no changes in the PR that uh, made like that sort sure, of deviate from this. I'll but yeah, check the if there are any changes there, and then okay. this is ready. Cool. 
So then this is something we would want in the DevNet as well, obviously, because it's like the counterpart on the CL side to this latest IP market change. Um, anything else um, on the CL side that we would want to specifically include or exclude um, from DevNet 3? Okay, and then on the Engine API, we already discussed this, but basically this is, uh, we would use uh, this, uh, um, this uh, blob specific API um, rather than, than get paid old B2, and then we can try and get this merged uh, today or, or tomorrow. Um, and then last thing on the DevNet 3 scope, um, there's a question by Alexei in the chat about withdrawals on the EL side. Um, my feeling is that if we're gonna be including them on the CL side, we should also include them on the EL side, but I'm curious what people think about that. Uh, well, so the, that would affect whether we have withdrawals in the payload attribute struct, which is like CL, EL, API. Yep. Um, my preference would be to include that just because we're going to have to eventually include it anyways, but I don't know. So this is basically, we include them in the, in the EL and uh, also in the engine API. Is that the implication here? Um, so we would include withdrawals in the payload attributes portion of the engine API, right. as well as like all the execution payload structs would include yeah. withdrawals fields as well. So that would like obviously impact the execution API or engine API endpoints. Okay. Okay. Does this make sense for everyone? It makes sense to me. And but it's also worth like we probably should also ask Taku Nimbus and them as well, just they're like and, and just they're also like big client team. So I'm curious to hear their thoughts. Anyone I see Ben from Deku here. I don't think there's anyone from Nimbus. Wrong button. You can see me. Um yeah, nothing to uh, add. Um, I, I can't speak intelligently to this need Enrico because he's not available today. So uh, he will catch up later and then feedback. Yeah. And anyways, I guess we're probably going to be discussing withdrawals and how they relate to DevNet 3 next week as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's worth having teams look into it. But uh, I think we have a bunch of other things that are a bit more settled that we can make progress on and until then. Um, and then uh, Roberto, you had started a GitHub issue, the track sort of status um, of, of things on the DevNet. Um, so I guess if people want to share updates uh, there, that's the place to go as they're working on it. Yeah, it's just meant to be an inform informal tracker. You know, okay. Even though we have a lot more clients starting to be implementing it, hopefully. Cool. Um, anything else on DevNet 3? OK. Um, and then uh, we have a few minutes to go. Oh, one, I guess, yeah, one more thing I wanted to make sure we cover is um, and uh, the CKCG bindings, uh, we said we have, uh, we're planning to have some for Go. Um, I guess for Rust and Nim, do we have a plan uh, to expose things? Uh, well, so for um, Rust, oh, I was just gonna say for Rust, um, I think Ramana uh, volunteered to help with that. Um, but there hasn't been progress, I think, just because the API is still stabilizing. 
Yeah, so in terms of the APIs, it's also best if um, someone from a client who wants to consume it uh, comes forward and then uh, then it can be done together. I think Ramana is happy to work that out, but it's hard to just build a yeah. build an API for a language that you don't actually use yourself. And then, yeah, you'll probably not uh, build the nicest API for that language. Uh, yes, so po Poan is available from our team to work on that. Um, so he's off today, but. Um, um, Alexa, you have a comment saying, CKZG needs additional discussion. Um, we have a minute to go. Is there something specific you think we need to discuss or um, on, on this call or, yeah, what, what do you think is like the most important thing here? Uh, yeah, uh, it would be cool to have like synchronized question uh, between GoKZG and CKZG and all the bindings uh, in terms of uh, uh, like uh, cryptography uh, outputs consistency. So uh, I cannot, we cannot synchronize with Go uh, with Geth uh, because uh, uh, we cannot verify blobs because with CKZG we have different outputs. We have different formats in uh, uh, setup, in um, KZG setup, all like that. And it prevents us from like finishing the EAP actually. And uh, well, it's not uh, yet cross-platform, this library, CKZG. And uh, we could uh, uh, collaborate on fixing this inconsistency and the uh, absence of uh, other platforms than just Linux, I believe. So I know we have like the group chat for CKZG. Is that the place where we should discuss this? Or do you think we need like an actual call to go over this in more detail? And um, what do you think is the best way to get this resolved? Yeah, maybe Let, let's continue to, in the chat, I just wanted to raise the problems and yep. uh, find uh, someone to collaborate on this. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so who is currently working on GoKZG actually? Is uh, Proto Lambda working on it or? Yes, I maintain GoKZG. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I just need a staple spec, a commit yeah. hash or something of the spec, and I'll implement it. Yeah, that's what I would suggest, right? So let's wait until we have that and that should be like very soon. And then, uh, then we just implement the same interface for both. Okay. Um, okay, uh, the only thing we didn't have time to cover uh, on the call was the, the blob uh, testing. We discussed it last week as well, and um, we have a group chat for that, so I, I don't think there's much to cover. Um, last thing before we hop off, uh, there's daylight savings happening in the US uh, and Canada this weekend. Are people okay if we move the call to 1530 UTC? Um, rather than 14.30, so it'll be an hour. For North Americans, it would be one hour later than uh, it currently is, or it would be, sorry, for North American, it would be at the same time next week that it currently is. For Europeans, it would, I don't know when you all change times. Um, uh, but yeah, done. does anyone yeah. have? L last weekend. Oh, you already did it? We're, okay. Uh, yeah, we're on. So is one hour later, uh, like 1530 UTC, does anyone have a strong objection to that? It makes life of North Americans slightly more tolerable. I don't know what time that is in Europe though. It'll be 3.30 in the oh. UK and 4.30 in Central yeah. Europe. <laughs> okay, that seems reasonable. Shall we? Asia Pacific lives matter. And is there a big for... difference? Yeah. Lighthouse and take routine. Um, does 1530 UTC versus 1430 UTC make a big difference um, in, in Australia? Uh, well, so I, I think it's pretty late regardless for them. So, I mean, I can represent Lighthouse at uh, whatever Eastern time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, nice. I didn't know. I didn't. I assumed you were also in Australia. I did not know uh, you had spread to more continents. Which yeah, I know. Got nice. American presence now. Okay, that's great. Um, 
Okay, I'll move it to 15.30 UTC then. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's super strong objections. Um, sweet. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, yeah, this is really good. And um, talk to you all on a CL call in two days. Awesome, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.